Here's six TR. Time to go over to the telephones for a special guest this afternoon. Very excited about this because on the line we've got the one and only Terence Hardiman. Hello, Terence. How are you doing? Hello, Terry. Nice to hear you. Oh, it's great to speak to you. We met, of course, uh, for the very first time about a month ago at Stoke on Trent. Was that your very first visit to Stoke? I, would, I think it was. Yes, I'd uh, <laughs> I travelled. I'd travelled uh, through Stoke, you know, on the way up to Manchester years ago when I used to do uh, work for Granada Television. So uh, yeah. I used to uh, see the name Stoke there, but uh, on the way. But uh, no, I, I'd never visited before. Yeah, it is a, t- a, a town or a series of towns that make up a city that's often bypassed on the way to Manchester or Birmingham, to be fair. We sit in between. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I would like to have had a chance of working in theatre there, but it never happened. You know? Of course, yeah. Well, I've just been having a look at him. Um, you've had quite a varied and interesting acting career, haven't you, Terence? Starting well, way I'm back so in the old, 60s. you know, I've covered a few things. <laughs> <laughs> well, starting back in the 60s, of course, your TV career um, kicked in. And uh, yeah, I just want to know how you got into it or what um, made you get into acting? Well, I'm one of the, you know, like most... most um, Kids go and do school plays, of course, don't they? And I yeah. got the bug rather when I was at school. Uh, then I then I went to university. Well, well first of all, I, I did some uh, amateur work in the in. I used to live in Essex, and uh, I'm an Essex boy. Mm-hmm. And we uh, and I did some am- amateur work there. And then uh, when I went to university, I got into uh, student theatre, and that's really where it kicked in. I mean, I used to get asked by my tutor, "Are you going to give me an essay this week?" And I'd <laughs> And I'd say, uh, I don't know that I am. Why well, are you doing a play? Uh, yes. All right. See you next week. Then. <laughs> and and that went on week after week. So I'm afraid my um, academic uh, qualifications were never terribly good. But I had a wonderful time in student theatre, and then went into the profession afterwards. Yeah. And of course, TV beckoned. I think, uh, according to my list here, correct me if I'm wrong, but Thursday Theatre was the first time you're on TV. Is that right? Oh my gosh, was it? I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you've got it written in front of you, it must be true. It might but, not uh, be. I t- well, I can't recall what... Uh, exa- the, the, the thing that really uh, got me going was a series called Softly, Softly, which was a police uh, series. It was a, it was a follow-up to Z Car. That's right. Yeah, that was the early 70s, wasn't it? That, uh, well, it was uh, right at the... That's right. Yes, it was. And then I went, uh, interestingly, my, my dad had been a policeman, and uh, he never rose very high, but he, had a, he, he loved the work, and he was a policeman. Uh, he retired after about 32 years as a policeman. But then uh, he never got to the rank that they gave me <laughs> <laughs> in my first tele series. I was made an inspector, a young inspector, straight away. Oh. And... Uh, he used to make fun of me, my dear old dad, but he was very good about giving me hints and tips about behavior patterns uh, at that time, how to hold my bet on and things like that, you yeah. know. <laughs> That's the best way to get it from the source, isn't it? Yes, it, well, yes, it was lovely, and he was very, uh, he, 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 I think he was rather proud of the fact that I'd, I'd made <laughs> inspector so quickly in my career. <laughs> <laughs> and then looking through this list about in front of there's so many things to mention but um there's quite a lot of authority figures that you seem to be playing oh yeah and uniformed yeah and uniformed yes yeah. i used to i used to think that the bbc only had one uniform and that they dyed it a different color according to what <laughs> service they wanted to put me into but uh, yeah i did a lot i, I got into uh, I think I played naval officers, and I played... Oh, of course, I started to get known. Because of my hatchet-looking face at that time, I think I played rather nasty German officers quite often. Yeah. And uh, there was a series called um, Secret Army, which uh, also was rather good for my career, and I had a lovely time in that, um, playing a, what was thought of as a good German. <laughs> yes. But, uh, got uh, shot in the end. Dietrich <laughs> Reinhardt was your character? Hans Dietrich yes. Reinhardt. That's it, Hans. Quite right, that's yes. right. He was a major. <laughs> I've got all the information here. I've got everything I need. Because, like, because uh, obviously, I know your career quite well. Because, like, I've, there's so many programmes that I used to watch religiously. Because, like, I've always been a bit of a TV buff. So, there's a lot of comedy shows that you popped up in in the 80s. Yeah. 
And, uh, but you know, it was a, a time when when you could, in a way. Um, yeah. I was very lucky. I, I, I had, didn't go into television until I'd done about ten years in the theatre. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's not the same thing by any means. I mean, I made a lot of terrible mistakes when I, from the moment I started. I didn't know how to, how to do it properly. But uh, but I did get the chance of doing lots of different sorts of roles, comedy and straight. You know, but. Yeah. Uh, well, I had, well, there's one story. I'd not never really seen myself on the box at, before. Uh, we were doing um, uh, softly, softly, and after the first episode was recorded in the can, as they said, uh, I was asked, "Would you like to go and see uh, see it? We're we're we're, um, we're going to show it." And, and I said, "Oh yes, I'd love to go and see it." So I. I went along. I thought all the cast would do, would do such a thing. In fact, I was the only one who went <laughs> along to some little cubicle with a televi- television monitor in at the BBC, and I was sat in front of it, and uh, they played it for me, and I watched it, and I was horrified when I saw this extraordinary creature walk on the set and uh, limp around and uh, all hunched up in a terrible voice, and I thought... Who is that? And it was me. And I was so <laughs> up, utterly appalled by it. The next day when I went in to rehearse another episode, I was sitting in a corner moping, and some lovely old actor who is, in fact, I think a Hungarian-born actor called George Pravda, he saw me in the corner. He said, what is the matter, Terence? I said, oh, no, I told him what had happened, and I saw this strange creature moving around, and it, everything was wrong about it. He said, oh, don't worry. He said, never iron out your idiosyncrasies. <laughs> it's what makes you different from everybody else, which was a n- nice piece of, thing, nice piece of um, encouragement to give a young inexperienced yeah, actor. The only trouble was I thought I was just all idiosyncrasies and nothing else. <laughs> well, some things definitely were because like it went on from strength to strength. And I was just about some of the comedic performances that he gave. And one of my favourites was in, in an episode of Goodnight Sweetheart when um, he oh, played yeah. Sergeant Wilson. Um, I did, yes. Tommy character. A very bizarre idea that uh, it was it the character um, that Nicholas... Uh, played um, um, Gary. That's right. It was, that's it, yeah. uh, it was a strange idea that it, it was. It seemed to work terribly well. But there we were, uh, uh, several of us playing the Dad's Army characters for real. And uh, I had to do a sort of imitation or suggestion of Sergeant Wilson and John the Measure. Lovely, yeah. lovely actor. I don't think I got it right, but um, anyway, there we are. It was, um, it was. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. And did Did you see the actual remake of Dad's Arm? Was it last year? It came out with Toby Jones. What the film? Yeah, did I you ha- see that? No, I haven't seen. I didn't see the film. I think there's something in me that um, slightly doesn't want to. I, d- I know. I what will you're catch up with it one of the days. But I know uh, what you're saying. It's it, difficult, isn't it, when you've, you you're so used to the characters and the people that were in the yes. original. Um, and of course, they still they're still being shown, of course, aren't yeah. they? Repeated and one, and uh, I love watching it. Youngsters watch it, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and love it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and they're really old pieces now, aren't they? I watched um, the "Are oh, You Being Served" episode they did recently, with uh, which was a reimagination where they brought in new uh, yeah. people to play Captain Peacock, like John uh, Challies played Captain Peacock. And it wasn't, oh yeah, it wasn't that bad. I actually enjoyed that. But yes, uh, I saw. I saw most of that one. Yes, I quite enjoyed that too. Yeah. Yes, but I know what you're saying. I do know what it's you're saying. It's a bit, di- a bit difficult to do because you can, you, you, for those who will remember the originals, you can never erase those uh, memories, and uh, you're, you're bound to compare, aren't you? And, Definitely. Uh, anyway, there we are. Yeah, and. Uh, Obviously, one of the biggest roles you've played on TV, for, um, especially some of the kids listening out there who have probably grown up now, <laughs> would have been the Demon Headmaster in the mid-90s. It's 20 years yeah. ago now. 20 years. I can't believe it's that long ago. No, well, I can't either. I'm looking out where I am at the moment. I live in London. And I'm just looking out onto a rather nicely sun-drenched garden here of ours. And I, and it, and I remember sitting out there with the scripts when they were sent to me to read when I was asked, would you would you read these scripts and tell us if you'd like to play this part? And I went to the bottom of the garden. It was a nice sunny day, I remember, like this, though warmer. And I sat on a, a chair and I just uh, read them through. And I came back up afterwards and said to my wife, I'd love to do this. And so I said to the agent, yes, tell them I'm very interested. Um, what a lovely pantomimic 
wicked character. What a marvelous thing to have a go at. Um, And I was asked, are you prepared to work with children, though? A lot of actors don't like it. I said, well, if they're good actors, what the heck does it matter? I I work work with good players. And I was very lucky. Um, They were a lovely set of kids, well looked after, well handled, well chaperoned, and very, very good actors, most of them were. And uh, when I say most of them, I mean they were, all of them. And and, and some of them had been trained a little at uh, uh, children's theatre schools, and others weren't. They were sort of amateurs who just come straight into it. And that the mixture worked terribly well, I thought. And it was great to do. And of course, there were spin-offs from that. I mean, yes, I was, uh, I began to be recognized in much more, especially as I lived near schools. And there were some, uh, about three schools around here. And they found, a lot of them found out where I lived and came knocking at the door. <laughs> <laughs> But you must have been recognised, like you say, you just go out to do some shopping and people are like, oh, he's there. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, so many would say, how do you do that with your eyes? Because <laughs> they had this effect of yes, making my right. eyes go swirly when yeah. I was doing this uh, hypnotising. That's right. And so I, I instead of telling them, uh, well, I just leave it to the BBC to do that with their special effects, I would say, I practice by looking into the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> a terrible lie. I should never tell children. Oh, like no, that, you should. should. No, you definitely should. You definitely, I can remember reading years and years ago when The Silence of the Lambs came out that Anthony Hopkins uh, went and sat in his local um, cinema in Wales dressed as how yes. Hannibal Lecter was dressed and just sat at the back and like, obviously no one had seen the character probably before they are all sitting there and they all walk out and he's just there in the lobby <laughs> <laughs> wonderful <laughs> I'm terrified the life out of them did he make his sound <laughs> yeah that would have been brilliant can you, just, can you just imagine that and I, I imagine um, the demon headmaster had the same effect you know just because people yeah. can't, can't sort of um cross that barrier between reality and TV it's, sometimes. It's, it's true. I mean, and of course, you're quite right, of course. It is a while ago now, and all those erstwhile children are now grown-ups with children of their own, and, uh, and they still do talk to me and, and say, um, you know, how I used to frighten the life out of them, but um, they liked it, too. I mean, they laughed at me. I was a pantomimic figure, so kids can deal with that. But on the other hand, I also... Sometimes they'll say, um, you know, were you the demon headmaster? And I'd say yes, and then I'd stare at them. Mm-hmm. And, oh, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and more recently, you were in Doctor Who, and I suppose for an actor working in the 60s and 70s, I'm surprised you weren't asked then, because like it seems that everyone was in Doctor Who, especially in the 70s. All great British actors did it. Yes, but... Yeah, the, the, once my career's always been a, a sort of up and down, a bit of a mixture, you know, I might... I think I had been uh, approached through the agent to do it uh, other times, but I'd not been available. You know, I was very lucky with uh, that, uh, that I did do quite a lot of work. Um, nowadays, I, I sit back and I don't do quite as much, but uh, then there was quite a lot of different work to do. And uh, when uh, somebody, say, from the Doctor Who team got in touch with the agent they'd have to be told sorry he's working on such and such or he's touring or he's on in a play or doing a radio something like that you know yeah yeah and uh, the last thing that's on my list here was something you did this year called agatha raisin um playing mr green now that was the i had that was the first um bit of work i'd done since having a, a heart operation I had, a, it's all right, I'm, I'm okay. okay. <laughs> but I, I had a, yes, I had to go. I, I'd been on tour about um, a year before doing some um, theatre, and uh, I started to feel there was something wrong, and then when I was checked up, they said, you know, you're going to have to have this operation, aortic valve replacement, not the whole heart, just the, the valve. So uh, I then stopped and... and, and uh, just waited for the time to come when I had to go in. Then I had to be a recovery period. And uh, then Agatha Raisin came up as the first bit of work, uh, television work, um, after I would, uh, was, had recuperated. Yeah. So that was, it got me back working again. Yeah. But I do take it a little bit more easily now, I have to say. 
Yeah, well, I don't blame you. But like I say, looking at all the great things you've been in, like it's been um, great to just chat and catch up about all these things. I want you to just come over to you when we're at Stoke the other week and just talk about everything. But uh, we had other things to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How so, far are you from Shrewsbury? Uh, it's not that far, yeah. to be honest. We. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm going there. I'm going there on um, on Friday next. There's a, they've got a, a Christmas concert called The Joy of Christmas, and uh, I'm going to take part in it at the Abbey. And uh, so it's nice. It's in aid of uh, Macmillan Cancer Research and the Seven Hospice. And uh, I think there'll be about 400 people who will go there to uh, take part. And uh, they've got music and they've got, you know, brass band and they've got uh, choirs and, uh, and actors reading funny stories. So that should be fun. That sounds so, great, yeah. So that's next Friday. Next Friday. Oh. In the, yes, in the evening. So... Pop on over. <laughs> I'll try. I will try. Well, it's been amazing catching up with you again, Terence. Uh, you like, too, Terence. Like I said Thank to you, you before, much. I'm not a Terence. I'm just a Terry. I was never extended <laughs> as a child. I was just Terry. Well, you know that. I'm, I've always been known as Terry. Of course I have. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you have to have your professional name. And the first thing is, when I became professional, it was Terence Hardiman. So I've been stuck with it ever since. But I'm Terry. You get called Tell because that's quite a, a London. Oh yes, well I told you I'm from Essex, are not I? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I oh yes, Tell. Tell was. Uh, though I went into the BBC once to do a children's uh, interview, and, so, and the the uh, the presenter said to me, "Will you mind if I call you Tell?" And I <laughs> and I looked in my demon headmaster way, and I said. If you do, I shall walk out of the studio. <laughs> so that stopped her. <laughs> I don't think I would have done, but there yeah. you are. I frightened the life out of her. Yeah, I get, I get Tez quite a lot, but not Tell. I think, like I say, it's more of a London thing, Tell. It is, because it's also the L becomes woo, so it's like Tell. Yeah, Tell. You know. Like Del. Tell. Del and yeah. Tell. <laughs> Del. Del and Tell, yeah. Perfect. Terry, it's been lovely speaking to you today again. And like I say, well, yeah. nice to hear you. And thank you very much indeed for phoning. Yeah, you take care. We'll catch up soon again. Thank you very much. Hope so. Bye bye.